My name is David Lynham. I'm the principal and founder of Lynham & Associates. I'm an attorney and my law firm is in the business of representing individual clients and the companies that they start. After I spent the first 10 years of my law practice working for large law firms and not finding the kind of enjoyment that I was looking for, as a lot of lawyers don't, I decided it was time for me to do something new and so I decided to go out on my own and start practicing by myself. So I founded my firm at that point and that was a very scary experience because when you have no money coming in and you're doing a lot of things as favors for people to get your firm going um, and it's a very challenging experience but it was also a very important one because I learned many lessons in doing it that way as opposed to having it handed to you, here's your office, here's your firm, go ahead, start working. The biggest challenge in my industry is technology. And uh, it, it, there's a, it's a two-edged sword because in many ways, technology has helped us be more productive. Email as opposed to the way it was done uh, 20 years ago when you wrote everything on a letter and mailed it in the US mail. Uh, it, technology has made that so much more immediate and instant. The problem that with that, of course, is that instant decisions are frequently not as good as the ones that are thought over and reasoned and evaluated over time. The other thing about technology is that we're all being forced into this paperless world. And you know, lawyers, of course, are typically slow to adopt uh, new methods of doing things. And you know, in my firm, just this January, we finally decided we were going to come paper light. And that has been a very challenging process to let go of the paper files and to adapt a completely digital platform for our firm. The courts have also done the same thing. And a lot of the administrative agencies are forcing us to become users and no longer filers and no longer representatives. So that is a very challenging aspect of what we do as lawyers. And then of course, how you manage to convert all of the work that you're now doing that takes sometimes twice as long because you have to solve the technology piece first and then it takes less time to actually do the work. How do you bill for that? How do you justify the cost to the client? The best business advice I believe I ever received was at the point where I had founded my own firm and I was looking for a business plan on how to properly look for new business as well as do the, do the work that I brought in. And I read an article about a, a young lawyer like myself who had started her practice and she was working with businesses who had ongoing matters that needed attention as opposed to single projects coming from an individual client. And her philosophy was is that she didn't have to spend nearly as much time looking for new work to do because the businesses she had as clients continually produced interesting things for her to work on. And I've adopted that mo mode and mo a modality and it's been uh, ever since I have never looked back. I'm very close to my employees and what I try and do, and they'll always tell you this if you ask them, is that I give them work that's slightly above their ability to do. And then I, of course I pay close attention to how they do with it. So they're being challenged constantly in terms of the level of work they're getting. And I think that's a good thing because they feel is that they're doing work above a level they would be able to get anywhere else. And they'll tell you, in fact, that my, my current law clerk who's just leaving to take the bar exam, he said to me the other day, I would learned more working for you than I do in law school. Well, that's a great compliment. Scott Graff, I'm the global president uh, of BCD Meetings and Events. Uh, we're a Chicago-based company that specializes in uh, global event management. So our business is a, is a global meeting and event management company, which means we specialize in, um, in all things corporate meetings and corporate events, sports hospitality. So our skill sets of our employees are destination selection, venue selection, um, hotel sourcing and buying, full service planning, on-site logistics, etc. I don't really see challenges in terms of what we know or how we can execute for our customers. I believe in our people and I believe in our process very strongly. The challenge I see is about pace 
It's about intensity. And what I mean by that is it's all about people. We're in the people business. We don't own a phone or a shoe or an article of clothing or an automobile to sell to anybody. We sell ourselves and our ability to execute outsourced meetings and events. And for me, the challenge is we're a global company, which means our work days for most of our employees can truly be 15 hours long. That is a real challenge for me as a leader because it grinds on employees and it wears them out. And when people get worn out, they look for other opportunities. And I want those people to stay at our company. And so we're trying to find ways to minimize that or allow people very flexible work situations so that when they are on and need to be with a customer at an odd time, that they're at their best. So that level of pace, if you will, and the intensity that comes with you know, today's world of technology, the expectation is that you're getting back to me immediately. And um, I think those combinations of pace and intensity for me, biggest challenge I face with my leadership team and with all of our employees. So in terms of setting examples for me personally, uh, I really try to focus on two things. Again, it's, it's not that I need to be the smartest guy in the room with the best answer, uh, for sure, because we have plenty of people that are very intelligent and creative and super cool. So I, I try to do two things. I try to set an example of being down to earth and say practice, you know, we practice common sense and hard work. And we never kind of forget that. It's fine, there's no job that's too small for me or any other leader in our organization. We're in the business of getting things done in a timely fashion, in a well-organized fashion. I think a second thing is, is just practicing emotional intelligence. We, we have a lot of people that come with a lot of perspectives, different cultures around the world, and that can drag out decision-making, et cetera, et cetera. And so being emotionally intelligent, practicing the art of compromise and, and living and breathing that, I try to set that example because it's an absolute requirement for us to be successful. Yeah, human capital is certainly the success factor for us. As I've mentioned previously, we, we don't own the widget. We don't own anything. So the humans and the, the capital and the knowledge and the drive and the work ethic and the common sense they bring to the office or to the environment every day, it is paramount. And if they're not, they probably won't be a long-term successful employee for us. That, that is what we drive at. So our leadership team is constantly focused on how do we make all of our team members as the best they can be and as happy as they can be long-term. From a very personal perspective, again, um, my personal style is to be casual and comfortable with our customers. Um, I, I pick up the phone and call customers all the time and just ask them, do you have 10 minutes? Many times I'll send an email and say, do you have 15 minutes sometime this week? And I, I don't have any specific reason to call and say, how's it going? Tell me what's going well with our group. Tell me what we can improve upon. And I usually dig at what we can improve upon. And if you ask in a comfortable way, you usually get pretty good information. And if you hear that from five or seven customers, there's probably something to it and I can react to it. And I think that's my personal style. Again, my leadership team can technically get in and help fix those things more quickly, but um, it's what I like to do. I think it's what I'm pretty good at. And then I can, in the same way, in a comfortable manner, get that message out to our company in a way that they don't feel threatened or that they've done something wrong, but it's just, it's time to tweak and improve. I mean, it's a continual, continual process.